In a previous video, we introduced the Arrhenius equation, which shows the relationship between temperature and the rate constant, and also introduces the idea of the activation energy. If we were to take the natural log of both sides of the Arrhenius equation and rearrange it a little bit, we would get another form of the Arrhenius equation, which looks a lot like the equation for a line y equals mx plus b. In this case, the natural log of k serves as the y values, 1 over t as the x values, and the negative activation energy over r is going to be the slope. We can further modify the Arrhenius equation to get this form of the Arrhenius equation, natural log of k2 over k1 equals e sub a over r times 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. This two-point form of the Arrhenius equation allows us to do a few different things. If two rate constant and temperature values are given, we can use this form to find the activation energy of a reaction. If we have the activation energy and rate constant at one temperature, we could find the value of a rate constant at a second temperature. Let's look at a few examples of using the Arrhenius equation. In this problem, we have a reaction we've seen before where we have NO2 gas reacting with CO gas to produce NO gas and CO2 gas. The rate constant for this reaction is 2.57 molarity to the negative one second to the negative one at a temperature of 701 Kelvin. At 895 Kelvin, the rate constant for this reaction is 567 molarity to the minus one second to the minus one. We can now calculate the activation energy for this reaction. To begin with, we note that we have two rate constant values and two temperature values. That means we can use the two-point form of the Arrhenius equation, ln k2 over k1 equals e sub a over r, 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. To begin with, let's isolate the activation energy. When we do this, we get the natural log of k2 over k1 times r divided by 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. Now we can plug in the values for each of the variables and then calculate the activation energy. When we do this, we get 5.40 times 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin divided by 3.09 times 10 to the negative fourth Kelvin to the minus one power. The Kelvin units will cancel, and when we do this, we get a value of 1.45 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. We often report activation energies for reactions in kilojoules per mole, so we can convert this answer to 145 kilojoules per mole. We can also use the Arrhenius equation to find the rate constant at a different temperature. We can use the activation energy from the previous problem to find the rate constant for this reaction at 500 Kelvin. In this problem, we're given the activation energy from the previous problem, the rate constant, in this case, we'll use the rate constant at 701 Kelvin. We have the initial temperature, 701 Kelvin, and we're looking for the rate constant at a second temperature, 500 Kelvin. In this case, we'll isolate the rate constant. It's important to note when working with natural logs of fractions that the natural log of A over B is equal to the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. When we use this substitution, we get ln k2 minus ln k1 equals e sub a over r times 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. We can isolate ln k2 to get e sub a over r 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2 plus the natural log of k1. We can now plug in the values for the variables and calculate to find the value of the natural log of k2. We get 1.74 times 10 to the fourth multiplied by negative 5.73 times 10 to the negative fourth plus 0 0.944. When we work out that equation, we find that the natural log of k2 is negative 9.03. But we're not done yet. Remember, we were asked to find the rate constant at 500 K. So far, we've only found the natural log of the rate constant. 
you should recall that in order to eliminate the natural log, we can use its inverse function, the exponential function e. So e to the natural log of k2 is equal to e to the negative 9.03, which gives us a value of k2 of 1.19 times 10 to the negative 4. Since we didn't change the reaction, the rate constant will have the same units as the initial rate constant, which would be molarity to the minus 1 seconds to the minus 1. By now, you should be able to select the appropriate form of the Arrhenius equation based on the values or variables that are given to you in the problem. You should be able to use the Arrhenius equation to find the activation energy for a reaction, and you should also be able to use the Arrhenius equation to find K2 for a reaction.